Hello everyone, this is me, Mr. Big T Anderson. We're doing another fanfiction reading from the Gotham fandom called Just a Little More Time by Papers, Pens, and Ink. And I'm just schmucky duck reading it. Paper, Pens, and Ink is the author, so obviously let's just get right into the action. So once again, just a little more time. A million questions filled his head at once. Selena just kissed him, again. He was in complete shock and didn't manage to make her stay, so she slipped by him with her usual confident walk. Not that he minded, though. He loved looking at the back side of her summer dress. It revealed her back, but not too much, just enough to come off as classy, not slutty. When she was out of sight, he backed into the wall, not able to support his own weight. He felt light, yet heavy, excited, yet confused. She always did this. She had a way of leaving him puzzled in a pool of mixed emotions, but he wouldn't have it any other way. He enjoyed the deep reflection she made him have about himself, about them. It seemed to make him a better person. No, it definitely made him a better person. He closed his eyes, still thinking of the smell of her skin. It was surprisingly sweet for someone who lived on the streets. He didn't mind the whole street kid thing anyways. If anything, he liked it. Selena was so different from anyone he'd ever met. She was strong, confident, not to mention beautiful. But he knew that deep down she wasn't as rude and cold as she sometimes came off as. She was kind at heart and cared a lot more than she likes to show. Of course, he didn't enjoy the idea of her alone in the dark, cold streets of Gotham where all the criminals and creeps hung out, but he knew that if there was anyone capable of defending themselves on the streets, it was her. But why did she kiss him? Was there any chance Selena had feelings for a simple boy like him? He asked himself that last question a lot lately. Sure, he was rich, but he always just saw himself as uninteresting compared to her. She was flexible, could jump from roof to roof with no problem, and was quite the survivor. On the other hand, he's this little rich boy who gets nannied by Alfred and could literally have anything he wanted. At least that's the way he saw it. A flash of hope hit him. Maybe, just maybe, she had a soft spot for him. After all, she was the one who kissed him. The idea lingered in his head. He really wanted her by his side. She's the one thing money can't buy. Selena had always been there for him, and her very presence comforted him. Could she feel the same about him? If there was ever a tiny chance that the answer was yes, he had to seize that opportunity. Bruce shook his head and put one foot in front of the other, heading back to the party, hoping she'd still be there, picking a few pockets. He'd made a bet with himself. If she's there, I'll take it as another sign. If she's not, I'll leave her alone for the night. As he entered the club, the loud music pounded in his ears, destabilizing him, but he had a mission, one he had to complete. He looked around, and to his disappointment, Selena was nowhere to be found. She must have headed home. After their exchange on the roof, he went back to Alfred, sulking. I think it's time we head home, Alfred. Master Bruce, you don't wish to stay any longer? I'm tired. Anyways, it's a bar. What would a kid want to do in here? The whole point is the alcohol. We're in a club, not a bar, but if you want to have a drink, I'm sure they have a juice box in the back. Alfred replied, trying to cheer his young master up. No matter how hard he tried, Bruce couldn't hide the disappointment in his eyes. Very well, then. Let's head for the car. Bruce walked slowly, head down, thinking of how he should have grabbed Selena's wrist, making her stay longer on that rooftop. He should have told her how beautiful she was to him and how much he enjoyed her company. If he could have a do-over, he'd stop time for her and give her what she deserved. He opened the car door and slipped into his seat without prying his eyes off the Sirens Club door for the smallest possibility of her returning. Got your head in the clouds or something? Bruce quickly turned to face the curly-haired teen who'd let herself in his car. Selena! Bruce replied a bit too eagerly. If that wasn't a sign, he didn't know what was. Got bored. Thought I'd check out how the other half lives. Well, in a car. She teased, knowing he didn't care why or how she got in. I went looking for you. I thought you'd left. I did all the work I needed to do, she answered, gesturing to her purse where all the cash was safely placed. She flashed him her signature grin. Do you want us to take you home? Paused at the wrong choice of words. Perhaps home wasn't what he should have said. I could use a ride. The shoes are killing me. Alfred nodded and started the car, curious at how this was going to play out. He didn't exactly see Miss Kyle as a good influence for his master, but he seemed to light up whenever she was around, so he made his peace with it. About what happened on the roof, Bruce started. The, the gorilla's right in front seat, Bruce, she responded calmly, not revealing that her heart was beating at a mile per hour. I don't care, Selena. I like you, and I don't care who knows. The truth is the truth, and I'm not trying to hide that. He admitted with a confident tone. 
Don't get all cheesy with me. That type of crap doesn't get to me. She answered without a crack in her armor. Now, Bruce is being kind enough to open up to you, so I suggest you be a respectful young lady and listen to what he has to say. Interfered Alfred with a cocky smile. Selena didn't respond, but blushed a little at the idea of having the old man listening to their private conversation. As I was saying, I... The car stopped in front of Selena's so-called home for the night. Bruce gave Alfred a rude glance, implying that he should have kept driving around in circles to give them more time to chat. See you around, Bruce. She let herself out of the car, giving Alfred a nod as a thank you for the ride. She was about two meters away when Bruce interrupted the sounds of the nearby police sirens. Selena. His voice was shaky and embarrassed due to the third party in the driver's seat. You... You look very nice today. She turned around, looked at the ground, then looked at him in the eyes with a smile forming at the corners of her lips. The shoes hurt. She responded before disappearing into the night. And that was just a little more time. I would say it's a cat and mouse game, but I think the correct term would be cat and bat. And I always had fun where they make Alfred kind of a little bit more knowing father slash grandfatherly figure. Because usually there's sass and sarcasm, and Alfred is the perfect vehicle for that, I think, in the Batman universe. So, yeah, uh, you guys know the drill. Links down below to story and author. If you liked it, give them some love. If you like my reading, comment down below. And overall, just have a good one. Ta-ta for now.